am Beryl, a lesbian woman with a six-year-old. I'm a medic and a researcher, currently working and living in Eldoret. I couldn't, I couldn't think that parenting would be this adventurous until I became a parent. So I dated my ex-girlfriend for 11 years. And in the 11 years, that's when we decided to have a baby. So we got, we could not agree on one sperm donor, but yeah, we managed to get someone who then agreed to be our sperm donor when we were still in the partnership. So even as much as we've broken up, since COVID started, my daughter has been with her other mom and I'm in Eldoret because we live towns apart. Yes, I had wanted to be a mother for two years before it actually happened. <laughs> Got it. I was mentally prepared. Yeah. My challenges and experiences are unique to me as a queer person. And uh, and that means for us, going for antenatal visits was just chaotic. And going for postnatal visits was chaotic because then you always ask to bring your partner, then you bring a woman, then they're always questioning, how comes you, where's the father of the child? And public hospitals are very discriminatory when you're attending services for antenatal and postnatal, especially for a queer woman. So that was the only challenge. But thank God, because uh, my daughter's other mom is also a medic. And then I would not have to, for all the postnatal visits, I would honestly say I only went for one. The rest, she had to take over. (laughs) I could not handle the questions. And the first time I went, I had to carry a, a squad so that they can back me up when they were insisting they wanted to give me postnatal pills or family planning. And they were like, she's already on a natural family planning method. She'll never get pregnant by sleeping with women. At postnatal clinics, the first, after the first six weeks, then you have to go on a family planning method. And I think since most hospitals are then used, they are so heteronormative. So they expect by six weeks you're sexually active, so you might get pregnant. So family planning is one of the things they'll tell you about. I was okay with all the other things, immunization, breastfeeding. I was okay with it, and I made sure my daughter breastfed until she was three years old. But the family planning part, they didn't have to force it down my throat. What I didn't mention when I was introducing myself is also I'm a board member of the National Gay and Lesbian Human Rights Commission. So publicly, activism, (laughs) yes. Um, I always advocate for LGBT rights because I know I am privileged. And I don't, I check myself every time because I know I'm privileged because I have an education. I know I'm privileged because I have little money and I can dictate what I want and when I want it. But not everyone has that option. So being in the queer spaces, uh, I usually say the queer community is like a family. They'll always affirm you and always watch out for you. So then coming out to my family, was also a plus for me because then when I was coming out and when I got the baby, my siblings had to talk to me, talk me through how then schooling is because I never had, I've never had to do it. I was the fifth born in a family of six. So I never had to parent anyone. So I never knew the challenges of parenting. And they've walked through the journey with me all through. So when I first took my daughter to school, that was the hardest time. Because at that time, we had separated with my partner. And so I took her to school. And the school forms always ask the father's name. And I left it blank. And the head teacher asked me, like, we really need this details. I'm like, there's nothing I can write. He's not there. I can give you an alternative number, but then it wouldn't be the father. So when we moved to Eldoret, I took her to a Christian school. <laughs> and our number one worry was, will they accept her the way she is? And this time I didn't leave the father's name blank. I scrapped it off and wrote the other mom's number and the other mom's name. And they never asked. But I had to tell the teacher that uh, this baby is growing up with two mothers. So don't continue asking her about where is your father or then what do you feel in your father's details and all that. The other challenge is insurance. 
while mama b is covered has a better cover than i do she can't cover her no matter what happens um but school so far it's going well she's been doing online classes at mama b's on fridays she does cookery and last week she made us pilau there are times when someone would make her life a little bit hard and she'd always say you know me i have two moms and all of them are kali <laughs> like don't try me <laughs> So I I think at some point she's accepted the fact that there's no father figure but she's never voiced it. So maybe she doesn't know the words for it. But the time will come when she'll actually maybe ask or never. I usually argue that lesbian bisexual trans women are still women regardless of your expression regardless of your identity you're still a woman so we all have the same challenges just as the hetero, hetero persons and that being said working for mainstream organizations sometimes is really hard because they've normalized you being mama mama nani and Sometimes I just want to identify as Beryl. I don't want to identify as Mama Nani. This is a workplace. But as much as I'm proud about my parenting, I've also had slurs about it. Like now when I came out, some of my colleagues were like, "I can't believe you also have periods." They usually come to the office booted up. <laughs> I'm like, "I'm having cramps. You shouldn't be having cramps. You're a lesbian woman." <laughs> Who is that? Who? No, for them it's you're too masculine to be having cramps. You're too masculine to be having menstrual periods, and you always have to correct because the no one taught us. I, I think I would. I think I would say what um, Martha Karua said. I wasn't taught. Like people were brought up and they weren't taught, and so when they do wrong it's not by their fault you just have to be patient with especially the people that you have to see every day like your colleagues you have to be patient and teach them because the relationship is long lasting from how you can be fertile and you're a queer woman and straight people sometimes don't get pregnant to how then did you become pregnant to then how are you going to raise this child in a world where everyone believes everyone should be straight to how you're going to come out to her when she's of age to then what happens when she gets bullied in school everyone believes that okay the order of nature people believe is then that a child has to grow up with a mother and a father and so we've had to learn and we've had to teach ourselves a lot of then what is same sex parenting and what is same sex relationships like and how then do you raise a child to be opinionated in a world that will try and put her down So the whole process of becoming a mother in the queer community is just hectic. From even the queer persons themselves they're like ah you you you, you sneak dicked you lie to us you queer kumbe here you sleeping with men. <laughs> so it's not just even from the straight people or the homophobes it's it's just a lot. I usually say to every parent to every child their parent is the best. So no matter how much you're struggling to your child you're the best. So every person who then desires to become a mother should be given that opportunity to become a mother. Let them do the best they can. I don't I, I don't know was ex- I don't know what I was expecting so I think every day for me is a learning curve. <laughs> But nothing has shocked me yet apart from the fact that she questions so many things and sometimes she's too shy some people I actually question if she's my daughter because I'm too expressive. <laughs> But nothing shocks me. Nothing shocks me. I am happy by the person that she has become. And I'm hoping that if God wills, we will live long and see more adventures. But the system the system makes you feel so bad about being a queer mother. that you start questioning whether this is a world you want to bring a child into because they hate 
the bullying, the stigma. You yourself as a queer person, you're already stigmatized, you're already discriminated. So what about this child who didn't sign up for this? You're the one who signed up for this and now they are collateral damage. So I think honest sympathy would be better than fake sympathy. Like, like empathy, not even sympathy. We are not, we're not feeling wishes for ourselves. We are happy the way we are. So just, just accept that someone can be a mother and they can be queer. Just as the word mother is universal, then mothering is just universal. Whether you're queer, whether you're straight, for as long as you've taken the name mother, you'll become a mother. And mothering then just takes a natural process. Yeah, just like pregnancy, it will take a natural process. <laughs>